Good morning, Lance Free Church. Um, as you can see, I'm not Pastor Matt this morning, but it's the Sunday after Christmas, and uh, he had asked me if I would preach, so here I am. Um, just a disclaimer here before we get started. Some of this going forward about what we're going to talk today, talk about today is going to sound familiar, and it should. Pastor Matt uh, has been showing us the Christmas story as he's been going through the Psalms, and uh, it's the same story. Um, so, it's, it's the tie-in with the Old Testament to the New Testament. Um, so we didn't cheat off of each other's papers or notes, um, but I hope it does sound familiar because it should. So um, Today's uh, sermon and, and what I've been thinking about is what the angel said. And um, the story will be very familiar to you, so uh, it's a simple message with a big meaning. And so if you would, grab your Bibles um, and read with me uh, while we look at Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And I will read it here for you. Uh, this is Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all, all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. And so, we've a familiar Christmas story. It's right. It's the one everybody knows. It's the one uh, Linus and the Peanuts, right? Um, <clears throat> that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. And so we just read it, and it's uh, a portion of Luke's gospel telling us about the birth of Christ, the Christmas story. And as we go through this, I want to focus on just a small portion dealing with the shepherds and the angel. And that discussion, and what that discussion was and what it means. Um, we have two participants, we have shepherds, and we have an angel of the Lord. Um, we know what, an an or what a shepherd is, but what about an angel? Um, the word angel simply means messenger. In this case, it's not just a messenger, but a messenger from the Lord an angelic being with something to say. And so, as we go through this, I just want to focus on verses 8 through 11, especially verses 10 and 11, and the massive implications of what the angel was saying. Hence the title, What the Angel Said. And so, <clears throat> as we read down through this, and we'll read it again, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. So let's start with verse 10. The shepherds are scared. Um, obviously, I think that would be anybody's reaction to uh, a quiet night, um, sitting around, and an angel of the Lord shows up. I would be scared too. I think we all would be. But this angel has some good news. And it's just not good news, but good news of great joy, right? It's 2020. Sometimes good news is hard to come by this year. Um, but you know what? I think, I bet these shepherds needed some good news too, right? They are people. The shepherds are people. Um, and people have problems and stress and anxiety, things we all go through. If we have stress in our jobs, they had stress in their jobs. If they were worried about the government, guess what? We're worried about the government. The, the same things that affected those shepherds affect us today. Um, stress, anxiety. So as these shepherds sat there, they needed 
some good news. And they needed this news in particular, good news of great joy. But I want you to notice, I want us to notice, who exactly is this good news of great joy for? Who was it for? If you notice in that verse, it's for all people. Who are all people? Well, shepherds in a field outside of Bethlehem. Jerusalem, the folks that are living in Jerusalem. Those are both true, yes. Uh, but for all people, for people in Israel, for people in Chad, Africa, for people in New Guinea, for people in Mexico, for people in the United States, for people over the mountain in State College, for people in Lance, Pennsylvania, uh, people in every corner of the earth. That's who this good news is for. And also, it's for all time. It's for shepherds 2,000 years ago, and it's for you, and it's for me, and it's for your great-great-grandkids and their kids. The good news of great joy is eternal. Uh, for all people. It doesn't diminish, it doesn't fade. Whether that's past, present, or future, the good news of great joy, it's always there. All right, so I guess we better find out, since we're talking about this good news of great joy, we better find out what it is. What did this angel of the Lord have to say? Let's read verse 11 again. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Today in the town of David, a baby has been born in a town called Bethlehem, the house of bread. That's the literal meaning of the word, of the term, name Bethlehem, the house of bread. Um, also known as Ephrata, uh, the town where David was born. This part should sound familiar to you. Pastor Matt taught us about this a couple weeks ago in Psalm 132. If you missed that, Go back to the church website and check it out. And as Pastor Matt went through these psalms, it's going to help you start putting this Christmas story together and this good news together. And so some of these things we've already learned about in the past couple weeks. Anyway, the angel says a baby has been born. Not just a baby, but what? A savior. Let me stop. This is what I want us to get these next three things mentioned in verse 11. This is, this is the point. These are the three things I want us to see. This was what the angel was saying. The point of the great and wonderful message that was sent to the shepherds and sent to us is in this next verse, these next three things. So first thing, a savior. A savior has been born. What's a savior? If you want to define the word, you could say a deliverer. Um, you could say a healer, a rescuer. It's somebody who saves you, right? A savior is somebody who saves you. So, if you're in Luke 2, look over, back, flip back, maybe you have to flip back a page, or look over on the, the page previous. Look at Luke 1, 68 through 75. Let me read that to you. Luke 1, 68 through 75. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and has redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And so this is Zachariah's song. Um, John the Baptist's dad. And he's saying something about this Savior. It was you, we read through that, the words pop out. Words like redeemed and salvation, mercy and rescue. Those are the things a savior does. Somebody who's taking care of you, rescuing you. Zechariah is talking about the same person the angel is. He's talking about Jesus. When you read the first part of Zechariah's song, he's talking about Jesus. Um, a rescuer from our enemies. A deliverer. Not only does he rescue us from our enemies, he delivers us, us from ourselves. Um, from our own sins, from our own fallenness. We see redemption, we see mercy, 
And we see the promise to Abraham to do these things. Look at verse 74. To rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear. This Savior will enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness. So, going back to part of what this angel has told us, what this angel has said to these shepherds, who is this Savior for? All people. That's what the angel said. The opportunity of being rescued, redeemed, and delivered is for all people. So how does this baby in Bethlehem do this? Look at the end of the Gospel of Luke. What are you going to find there? You're going to find things like the cross, the resurrection, the ascension of Jesus. Um, look at the end of your Bible. What do you find at the very end of your Bible? You find revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Don't miss the point about revelation. It's about Jesus, right? Sometimes we get out in the weeds. Sometimes we miss the forest for the trees when we're talking about revelation. But it's about Jesus. It's part of this same proclamation that the angel is speaking. It's Jesus saving work continuing for his people. And so when you look through the whole Bible, that's what you're going to see. Beginning to end, right? A savior. A savior is something the shepherds needed. Right? We said that they probably all have the same problems as we do. Um, maybe money problems, maybe uh, health problems, worried about family, uh, you name it, right? They're going to have the same problems we do. So if the shepherds needed a savior, guess what? We need a savior. Our family needs a savior. Our friends need a savior. The total stranger walking down the street needs a savior. So, as we continue on, the second thing we want to look at the angel, that the angel reports, is what? He is Christ. Christos in the Greek, or Messiah in the Hebrew. Um, what does Christ mean? What, what, does the, what does that word mean? In a general sense, it means an anointed one, or a consecrated one. Somebody who has been declared sacred. Along with that, those things, you get a sense of a job and a purpose. The person anointed, the one who was anointed, has something to do. This child, announced to the shepherds, has an anointing and he has a purpose. Um, so let's back up just a little bit for some context and some precedent. If you look back through your Bible, there were three main groups anointed or consecrated with oil in the Old Testament. Prophets, kings, and priests. Uh, if you want a few examples of that, you can try out 1 Kings 19, 16, Exodus 40, 12 through 14. Um, each one of those groups of people had a God-given job and a purpose. Now, we have this angel the angel of the Lord proclaiming this child is Christ. Capital C, Christ. The Christ. A uh, simple word. But Christ has meaning. This is what the Old Testament was trying to tell us. This is the promise made to those Old Testament guys, right? Remember David? How about Psalm 2 from last week uh, that Pastor Matt preached to us? He was an anointed king. David was an anointed king. It talks about the anointing. Um, it talks about this idea of Christ. So let's think about this a minute as we go through this. Jesus is an anointed prophet. Prophets proclaim the word of God. Prophets and their words have to be true. If you claim to be a prophet and your words aren't true, then guess what? You're not a prophet. Jesus, his words are true, and he backs it up with his life. Jesus himself proclaims, right? Remember this? I am the way, the truth, and the life in John 14, 6. I just said that a prophet proclaims the word of God. Jesus takes this a step farther. Look at John 1, 14. This is John's Christmas story. Maybe you didn't know that John had a Christmas story, right? If 
but John does have a Christmas story. And if you're a if you're getting ready for a Christmas pageant or you want to do something special for Christmas sometime, tell somebody tell them you're going to read John's Christmas story. Okay? It's real easy. <clears throat> Here it is. You ready? John 1:14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. John's Christmas story. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. There it is. That's all you get. That's John's Christmas story. But what does it say? Jesus is not only proclaiming the word of God. He is the word of God. And he has come. He's here. He's been here. And guess what? Jesus is a, on a, a prophet on a level that nobody had ever seen before and never will again. And so he is an anointed prophet. The prophet. Right? And along with this idea of, of anointing and Christ, the, uh, the Christ, um, the Messiah, Jesus is an anointed priest. If you want to find out about Jesus, the great high priest, um, where would you go? I would direct you to the book of Hebrews. Um, Hebrews 4.14 says, Jesus is the great high priest. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. In the Old Testament, right, the priests were the only ones who did the sacrifices, the only ones that entered into those holy places. Now, through Christ, Jesus, the baby, right, that the shepherds are supposed to go see, we have access to God. We can have confidence to receive mercy and grace because of the anointed one, because of Christ, because of the high, great high priest. It's almost unbelievable that we can approach God, but we can, and he wants us to. So it's something to take away from this. He's a prophet. His words are true. He's the great high priest. He's that intercessor between us and God. We can go to God because of Jesus. One more here, right? When we're thinking about, we said there were three groups that were anointed, prophets, priests, kings. Jesus is the anointed king. Just like the Old Testament kings, Jesus is anointed king. The one who, who is on the throne, the one who rules. Um, sorry to disappoint you, <laughs> but there are no election cycles, voting or politics, when Jesus rules. I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> he has the say and the final decision. He is the king. Um, if you think back and look at Revelations 19, 11 through 16, you see these words, and they're all in capital letters. King of kings and Lord of lords. There's no questioning those words. That's a statement that has power that's unimaginable. Jesus is everything every earthly king never was, right? Jesus is everything earthly kings aren't because of their fallenness and sin. He's righteous. He's true, he's good, he's kind, he's loving. Don't miss that righteous part, though. Like a good king, he doesn't tolerate evil, right? He has to punish evil. He has to punish sin, right? So don't forget that part. But all those other parts, that's what we want. We want somebody who's righteous and good, kind. That's the kind of king we want. There's not going to be any bickering and fighting about who's who and what's what. Jesus is going to be king, and he's going to set everything straight. So, <clears throat> circling back around a little bit, what was the angel telling the shepherds to go see? To go see the Christ. To go see Christ, the prophet, the priest, the king. Not anointed by man with oil, like back in his Old Testament days, but with the Holy Spirit. Uh, if you check out Acts 10, 34 through 38, you're going to see that, talking about... Jesus being anointed with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> this, this Christ was Jesus the baby back in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. If you're reading through this manuscript or watching this today, he's the same Christ. It's the same Christ. It's the same Jesus. <clears throat> We're not missing out. In fact, we still have it. He's still there for us. 
Um, just because we're not shepherds going to see a baby doesn't mean we can't know Christ. <clears throat> Got one more for you. He is the one who is supreme. <clears throat> He's the one who's overall. Let me say that again. The angel said he is the Lord. We think about that. He is the Lord. He's the one who is supreme. He's overall total authority, the creator. This little baby, the shepherds are to go see. This good news of great joy, the angels proclaiming, is the Lord. These shepherds will see the creator who created them. They get to look at the one who knitted them together. The Alpha, the Omega. Um, Pastor Matt, he's been leading us through Psalms. And I want to give you a portion of my favorite psalm. Um, just a little piece. Psalm 139, 13 through 16. It says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast the sum of them. <clears throat> This child, this baby, is the Lord. Jesus was there when we were put together. This child is God, right? John 1.1, 1, 1, the Word was God. King of kings, Lord of lords, in the beginning God. That's him. That's Jesus. And that was the angel, This me that was the message this angel was bringing. And so, that is a lot of things in just these few words, right? The few words the angel spoke. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And remember, those words were for all people. So 2020, by most accounts, was not a great year. And guess what? When the calendar turns here in a week or so, we don't know about 2021 or 2022, or beyond, but, dot, 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 guess what? We have a Savior, we have the Christ, and we have the Lord. And guess what? That sounds like hope to me. That sounds like a bright future. Listen to what that angel had to say to those shepherds and to us. We have Jesus. So, we all get down, right? Maybe we're really down right at this time of year, right? Things aren't going good. Um, it's just not normal. But guess what? This, this doesn't end here, right? It goes on. It goes on for eternity. That's what this child gives us. That's what Jesus gives us in eternity with him. We have Jesus. And so... Hope you learned something. Uh, hope you can put this to use. Hope you can think about these things. Um, and look forward. Look forward to what's coming. Um, uh, an eternity with Jesus Christ. Um, no sin, no suffering, no pain. And so, Merry Christmas and have a hope filled New Year. Thanks. <laughs>